Hello everyone and welcome to our 22nd lecture. Today uh, I will go through an example uh, that pretty much covers everything that we have learned in this chapter and we will find control delays for the same signalized intersections that we have been dealing with over the past few examples. So now we are at the point that we can um, work on another example. So this is the same example that we have uh, start uh, working on it in a series of previous examples in this chapter. So you have an intersection, the traffic volumes are given, the phase sequence is given, we have already found minimum cycle, green times and everything. So based on what we have found, um, here the example wants us to determine delay for the eastbound approach uh, of Maple Street assuming that no initial queue is present at the start of the analysis period. So uh, like what we have done in previous examples uh, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video at this point for uh, six minutes work on these and when you're done come back and um, see how we are solving this problem. So in example 7.2 we determined different lane groups for the eastbound approach. We had left turn lane group and also we have combined uh, true and right turn movements. So what we are going to do in this example is that we're going to find the control delay for eastbound left and eastbound through right lane group separately. So for the left turn lane group or eastbound left lane group, uh, we have the following input. We know that the cycle length at the intersection is 65 seconds. The green time for this lane group is 12.5. Here I want to find V over C. So V is the um, flow rate, C is the capacity. If you remember, uh, you can find the capacity by multiplying the saturation flow rate into G over C ratio. G is the green time, C is the cycle length. So if you put all the numbers in the equation for this uh, lane group, uh, you're going to have what you see in front, uh, what you see here. V is 300 vehicles per hour per lane. This is eastbound left volume. Saturation flow rate was given to us in previous examples. It was 1750. And G and C, you can see them there. So that's going to give us a V over C ratio of 0.891. Now we need to plug all of these in the equation for D1. Remember that Xi is V over small c. So that's why here I found v over c because in the equation I need to have xi and xi is v over c. So 0.5 into cycle length. Cycle length is 65. I have it there. gi is 12.5. Uh, I also have that there. If you plug everything in the equation your D1 is going to be 25.6 seconds for eastbound left. We are not done yet. Now we need to find D2. So again, T is 15 minutes or 0.25 X. We already found it in the previous example. This X is identical to XI. It's 0.891. K, we discussed it in previous slides. It's a pre-time control, so we are going to use a value of 0.5. I is 1 because we have an isolated intersection. C is 337. That's what I found in the previous slide by multiplying S into G over C. So I have everything for D2. 900 into T into the rest. So if you work your way through this equation by plugging all the numbers. D2 that you're going to find is going to be 27.8. 
So what is total control delay here? It's D1 plus D2 plus D3. D3 is assumed to be 0. So D is going to be 25.6 plus 27.8 plus 0, which is 53.4 seconds. Remember, D is average control delay. So on average, each vehicle that is going to go through this intersection on eastbound left movement is going to experience a delay of 53.4 seconds. Now, we are going to do the same for eastbound through right. Cycle length is the same, 65 seconds. Now, what is going to change is G. Because for eastbound through right, our G was 24.7 seconds. As a result of that, V over C is going to change and D1 and D2 both are going to change. So what is V? V is, 100, uh, is uh, 1100 vehicles per hour. I have it up there. Saturation flow rate is also different. It's 3400. And you can see that I have a G of 24.7 divided by 65 if you work your way through this equation your v over c is going to be 0.851 this is equal to xi as i'm going to use it in d1 equation so minimum of 1 and 0.851 is going to be 0.851 that's what you see down here and I have used 0.851 if you work your way through this equation your delay is going to be 18.5 excuse me your uniform delay is going to be equal to 18.5 now we need to go through D2 our random delay the input is given here x is 0.851 and our capacity is 1292 remember how we find capacity is equal to s into g over capital c um, and now if you put everything in the equation for d2 We just get a D2 of 7.2 seconds. So this is our random delay. What is our total delay, delay for eastbound to right? Just a summation of D1, D2, D3. D1 is 18.5, D2 is 7.2, D3 is 0. So our total control delay, our, our average control delay for eastbound to right is 25.7 each vehicle on eastbound to right lane group is gonna experience an average control delay of 25.7 seconds now we want to determine the level of service the service measure that we use for level of service determination at signalized intersection is delay uh, so we need to find delay for each lane group and based on that we will find uh, the level of service for each lane group we aggregate those across one approach we will find the control delay on an approach and based on that we'll find the level of service for the approach and we do the same and find the level of service for the intersection if you remember in previous slides we discussed that um, we find control delay for each lane group and then we need to aggregate them to find the control delay for an approach and that's what we uh, have on this slide so DA is the average delay per vehicle or average control delay for approach A. The unit is in seconds. And you can see that we find that by 
calculating a weighted average of control delay for different approaches and the weight that we are using is the volumes so i'm going to give you just a very easy example so uh, we are talking about an approach so i'm just going to draw uh, one approach here and let's say i have a left turn movement this is eastbound left and i have a true movement so if the delay for true loop movements let's say is 25 vehicles uh, seconds per vehicle this is control delay and for the left turn is 10 and then the volume for true movement is a thousand vehicle per hour per lane and for left turn is 50 vehicle per hour per lane the approach delay based on the equation that we have da is going to be equal to um, delay multiplied by volume this is for eastbound true plus delay multiplied by volume this is for eastbound left divided by the summation of volumes and that's going to be a number that we are going to find so that will be delay for eastbound approach so what if i had another lane group here if i had another lane group maybe a right turn movement and my delay was five seconds and the volume was 150 vehicles per hour per lane then my equation would change to what i'm going to write down down here so it would be 25 into a thousand plus 10 into 50 plus 5 into 150 divided by the summation of all volumes okay so when we have the delay for each approach we can do the same to find the delay for the intersection so you see the equation down here and now uh, i'm gonna need to know uh, the delay and volume for each approach of the intersection so if i have something like this and i know that the delay is 50 on this approach and volume is let's say 500 for this approach i'm gonna go with 20 and 250 so the first number again is the delay the second number is volume for this approach let's say my volume is a hundred uh, sorry my delay is 40 and the volume is a thousandth and for this approach my delay is 25 and volume is 300 if you want to find the intersection control delay it's just the same approach so i'm going to have delay into volume for eastbound plus delay into volume for southbound plus delay into volume for westbound plus delay into volume for northbound and that is divided by the summation of all volumes and whatever the number is is going to be the control delay for the entire intersection now what i would like you to keep in mind that these volumes that i have here these volumes uh, 
are the summation of all volume that you have on different lane groups of that approach. So this 500 is the summation of eastbound left, eastbound through, and eastbound right volumes that you have for the eastbound approach. Finally, when we have the delay, based on what we have, we can find the level of service. So you can see here how we use the delay to determine the level of service. If it's less than 10 seconds, you are A, between 10 and 20, you are at level of service B and so forth. You go forward up to 80 seconds. And what is good to note is that you can find the level of service for a lane group, for an approach, and for an intersection. So that brings us to this example, example 718. Pretty much a continuation of what we have done so far. We have found delay for eastbound left and eastbound through right. Now we want to find the level of service for eastbound approach in this intersection based on all material, all, all input that we have had so far uh, in previous examples. So nothing has changed. So what we will be doing is that we have delay for left turn lane group, we have delay for true right lane group, we have volume for left turn and volume for true right. So we just find the total control delay for or the average control delay for the eastbound approach by finding the weighted averages. Okay, so we need to find the delay for eastbound approach we are going to use the weighted average equation so it's volume for eastbound left into the delay plus volume for eastbound to right into the delay divided by the summation of volumes uh, so eastbound left is 300 the delay is 53.4 seconds eastbound to right is 1100 the delay is 25.7 seconds we just do the calculation and we will find that the average control delay for eastbound approach is 31.6. That tells us that the level of service for eastbound approach is C. Now I want to go another step forward. Uh, we are going to assume that the delay for each approach and the volume is given to us as you see on the slide delay for is one approach 31.6 volume 1400 delay for westbound approach 30.2 volume 1400 delay for northbound 49.7 volume uh, 480 delay for southbound approach 42.3 volume is 440 we want to find the delay and eventually the level of service for the intersection. So if we want to find the delay for uh, the intersection, we need to go through another weighted average step. So I'm going to give you or ask you to pause for a couple of minutes, do this, and then we, got, we are going to continue on the next slide. Okay, so delay for eastbound approach, if you want to find it, um, we have it 31.6 for other approaches we have it. So based on that, you just need to find the level of service for eastbound approach. We already did C for westbound approach. It is also C for northbound. It is D and for southbound also it is D. So for the intersection. You do the weighted average, you just plug in all the numbers, 31.6 into 1400, 30.2 into 1400, and the rest. So if you do the math, the average control delay for the intersection is 34.7. If you look at the table, that's between 20 and 35. So the level of service is C. So this example concludes uh, what we were planning to cover in chapter 7.